the American Thoracic Society, European Respiratory Society, Japanese Respiratory Society, and Latin American Thoracic Society have published a new clinical practice guideline to help physicians diagnose idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. IPF is the most common and deadly form of a group of more than 200 conditions known broadly as interstitial lung disease. Most often, IPF is diagnosed in adults over age 60 and more often in men than women. The median survival is three to five years after diagnosis. Symptoms due to low oxygen levels include shortness of breath, dry cough. Diagnosing IPF is challenging because these symptoms are nonspecific. They occur with all interstitial lung diseases and with other respiratory problems. Because drugs may slow the progression of IPF, an early and accurate diagnosis is essential for prompt and appropriate treatment for this fatal disease. The 29-member guideline committee discussed the findings of all accumulated evidence pertinent to six clinical questions about the diagnosis IPF and rated the quality of the evidence using the grading of recommendations, assessment, development, and evaluation system, commonly referred to as the grade system. Of the key refinements included in the criteria is the use of four diagnostic categories based on high-resolution tomography of the lung, usual interstitial pneumonia or UIP pattern, probable UIP pattern, indeterminate pattern for UIP, and alternative diagnosis. The committee made the following recommendations for diagnosing IPF in all adult patients with newly detected interstitial lung disease, or ILD, of unknown cause. Take a detailed history of medication use and environmental exposures to eliminate potential causes of ILD. Serological testing should be performed to exclude connective tissue disease as a potential cause of the ILD. For patients with a high-resolution tomography pattern of probable UIP, indeterminate for UIP, or an alternative diagnosis, conditional recommendations were made for performing bronchoalveolar lavage and surgical lung biopsy. For patients who have an HRCT pattern of UIP, strong recommendations were made against performing SLB, TBBX, and lung cryobiopsy. A conditional recommendation was made against performing BAL cellular analysis. A conditional recommendation was made for multidisciplinary discussion to aid in diagnosing IPF. A strong recommendation was made against measurement of certain serum biomarkers for the sole purpose of distinguishing IPF from other ILD. The hope of the committee is that this new guideline will bridge the gap between the experienced IPF experts and general pulmonologists in making a prompt and accurate diagnosis of IPF for the patient. This will allow patients to make well-informed decisions about treatment options and participation in clinical trials in a timely manner. To learn more about the new guideline, visit www.atsjournals.org.